And I was going through a major transition in my life at the time, both professionally and personally. And I didn't even really know why I wanted to do it. I had, I had no absolutely zero from a cerebral mental standpoint. I had no idea why I wanted to go through a rites of passage, a death ceremony and everything that it entailed. He didn't go too specific, but I knew enough to know um, it would not only be challenging physically, but more emotionally and mentally. And, um, and so I was seeking to um, further my awareness of myself, especially some internal demons and fears that I had been carrying around for a long time, but I was already doing some work on. And so initially I thought, uh, you know, I was going to go out there and seek some sort of vision. And so during that time, it was just, a, it was literally a gut and heart feeling, something bigger than my brain telling me that you need to go do this. I, I, I don't have a word for it. You know, we can call it the universe, spirit, God, creator, whatever you want to call it. But that something said, you got to go into those woods. <clears throat> and so um, I fell in love with Cater. Um, he had this energy about him too, uh, this calmness, this, you could tell the man had been through a lot, had studied a lot, and um, had a gift. And I wanted to experience this particular ceremony. And right, I've never been to a rites of passage council of any kind. And I think that's something that's lost in today's society. And so my calling was a conversation as we were mentoring young men in the Asheville Mountains. I'm from Atlanta, by the way, and he's in Asheville. But uh, just a conversation and this overwhelming gut feeling that you've got to go do this. And I did it. And so that, that was the calling, if you will. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting, um, again, each person is going to experience it in their own way. And each person is going to, here's one, here's, I don't know much about anything, but here's what I do know that you will discover something in yourself that you would never have whatever you think you're going to experience is not what you're going to experience so i'm just going to prepare you for that but you're going to experience something amazingly transformational and so my time on the mountain in in stillness in with lack of food and no shelter and all that good stuff the stuff i already knew going in um i went in seeking a vision but going through you know they prepare you for three or four days prior to your actual quest and then there's a, a rebirth ceremony coming out of it but it became clear to me during that time that there was some wounds and fears and insecurities that i needed to look square in the eye and and get clarity on um and no longer let them anchor me down and so I went out there to, to face what was real, what was unreal, what was seen, what couldn't be seen within myself. And we'll call it fears, insecurities, and for lack of a better word, demons that I had been dealing with since I was a young boy. And um, there was a lot of clarity, a lot of forgiveness, a lot of laughter, a lot of uh, anger, a lot of upsetness that, that just came out of all that. But there was also, and I don't want to go too off the there was a lot of unexplainable things that happened during that time when questions were asked that, um, that I can't really clear um, with forgiveness, with um, letting go of some things, and also coming from a state of being grateful for some of those experiences in my, my former life. So it ended up being something completely different than I thought I was gonna go in and get some clear vision on you know, the future of my life. But I think what it did lay for me is groundwork and a solid foundation so that I could get clear to go seek further personal and professional um, clarity from the, from, the, uh, from, the, from the experiences that I had on that mountain. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Interesting for me, it'll be the most free thing, like you have no boundaries, there's a mountain, there's woods, it's just you and nature, but without all of the societal noise, the phone, the, you know, the constant distractions that we have all around us, the social media, the phones, the media, the TVs, the noise, it was really fascinating to me how frightening that was for the first half a day and how the silence was deafening. It's just a strange thing. And over time, you become so at peace with that 
and so um, fulfilled by the lack of all that distraction that it's all it was it was quite strange coming back to the quote world <laughs> after that so it, uh, it you know you can almost feel confined when in reality you're you're as wide open and as as you know in tune as you could possibly be so that was a that was a really weird thing that I experienced right off the bat. I think the biggest impact the ceremony ha had on my life is the releasing of um, some stories that were no longer serving me in any way possible. It, that came with a lot of fear and insecurity, for lack of a better word. And we all struggle with that. It doesn't matter where we are, who we are, what color our skin is. We all have our, our, fear, our demons, our fears, our insecurities. And becoming okay with forgiving myself and forgiving others um, and using, so how it has affected me later in life is, whereas those were ceilings I was hitting, you know, in my life, both professionally and personally, and in my relationships, I, they're now a floor that I can stand on. And so that's probably the, the best way I can put that is being able to look at those things no longer from a place of um, uh, anger or, or fear or insecurity or whatever those negative sides is you almost see those things from a state of gratitude and see how they happen for you as opposed to to you and using them as a pillar to stand on so that you can further your journey, whatever that direction is in your life. So that was probably the biggest takeaway. And what was interesting, um, and I don't know, I, I, I didn't listen to Cater in his wise counsel. I went straight back into society, into an entrepreneurial conference. Not a good idea. Like literally not a good idea. And so it was crazy you know, being, I don't, I don't remember if it was 11 or 13 days on the mountain total, but it was somewhere around that, right? Um, could have been nine or 13 or 11. I don't remember. It, it doesn't really matter. It's, you, you, time stops. But when I came back into that conference, so open and in tune, it was though I could see through, there was like 500 people at this conference. I could literally see through each one of them past all the armor and facades and, and masks that they were wearing, like I could see all the artificial conversations and the wounds and the mask. It went away about after about four days, thank God, because that's a superpower I did not want. Um, but it was interesting seeing how none of us really, or, or that particular group, could feel like they could be their genuine, authentic, vulnerable selves. They were all had to be something that they weren't in order to prove themselves to society. And I could see right through that when I came home. And it was almost overwhelming. It was, all, you know, it was a, a very hip, young conference with all this stuff that goes on with that. Um, and for me, I, I wish I would not have done that, but I wouldn't replace that experience because I, I, I could see myself in them because that's who I was, right? Is the one wearing all the, the armor and mask and got to be important guy, fun guy, cool guy, you know, look at me guy, see me, hear me, love me. And I could see right through that, just who they were. And that was really cool. In fact, like four or five people was like, are you looking into my soul? I was like, I think so. <laughs> so <laughs> luckily that went away. <laughs> I couldn't imagine being Superman where you have those hearing and seeing and all that stuff. But uh, that was a really cool thing because it wasn't a judgment thing. It was, I, Hey, I can see, I could see myself and all those people and how, how maybe doing that is not the best way to live. It's just maybe being me is the best way. I'll, I'll speak from my experience. Something I've always struggled with in my life is uh, pride and envy. You know, pride is looking down, uh, like thinking you're better than, and envy is always like, oh, I wish I had what you had. Um, and realizing that we're all on this, this, this journey together and that wherever we stand in this line of life, We've stood where this person has stood before and, and we can look at this person with more inspiration and cheer them on as opposed to envy. And we can also humble ourselves to, especially me in my situation is, you know, I've, I've once stood where they were from. And um, so I think it, I, I think it allows just to see people for who they really are and not who we, I'll say we pretend to be, <laughs> you know, and who we really are and know that we're all in this life together and there's no better than or less than. And I think just from uh, empathy, from a discernment, 
um, boundary as well. Uh, and be tr I'm going to be very truthful. This is going to sound harsh, but it's, it's actually a boundary is not allowing negative influences in energy and in people into my life but also have an empathy for those people because, you know, whatever they're dealing with, if it's anger or sadness or judgment or whatever, you know, whatever they're dealing with, it's look at them from empathy, but also it has allowed me to set the appropriate boundaries so that I pretty much have positive, abundant energy around me because I, you know, like attracts like, man, and I'll follow those people right down the path. So I think coming back, both from a boundary standpoint, a humility standpoint, an empathy standpoint, but also um, just knowing that we're all on this journey together. And here's the truth. At the end of the day, we're all warm food anyway. So don't take it so serious. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we're all going to end up the same, <laughs> regardless of where we are, right? <laughs> I would absolutely do it. Um, it was... I'm, I'm into all things self-improvement and self-betterment and looking into the mirror and figuring out how I can be better than I was yesterday and leave this world a better place. And um, both thought for men and women, we've lost the, the, the transitions in life. It, it's, it's now based on school. You know, you go from kindergarten to high school to junior high or whatever. But this was more about life and, and transitioning to life, let things die and re be born and, and become the best version of you. So I would highly recommend it. I'm actually considering doing a second one sometime in the near future. Um, but also going in with an open mind and open heart and letting the experience be what it needs to be. And um, I promise you, you're going to experience something massive but you won't know what that is until it comes. And it will allow you to um, experience and live something that you'll never forget, but it will also impact you the rest of your life. So I would highly, highly recommend it.